Hi guys, Dave here for Dave Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in. I'd just like to take you through my shelter that I use most of the time when I'm out in the bush. I'll just hop on this side, to be easier. So this is the general setup here. The hammock is a Hennessy hammock, and I used to use the Hennessy shelter that came with it. But I'm going back more and more to uh, this New Zealand Army surplus shelter that I've used uh, for quite a few years now. So um, I've gone through the Hennessy hammock before on another video, so I'll just go through the shelter. So as I was saying, this was, uh, was and I think still is a standard army issue for New Zealand Army. The, uh, the pattern, the camouflage pattern is called DPM, disruptive, disruptive Pattern Material, and it's based on the British design. Uh, this shelter here is uh, 2.4 meters long and 1.8 meters wide. So there's plenty of room in under there. The, it's very, very solid construction. It really is. There's tons of tie-off tabs and grommets and then even snaps along the edges so you can um, uh, fix one shelter to another and just make a large tarp system. And it even has up here, if you want to use Ridgeline, which I know a lot of people do, tabs up there and there's one at that end as well. Uh, reinforcing points are really good. It's reinforced here at all the major ones. The two, uh, the two uh, lines, the two main lines there are reinforced and then on all the corners as well. The way I set it up is a little bit different. A lot of people use ridge lines. Um, you, you basically go right through with a single line and then it's quite handy. You can move your shelter along it and adjust it to exactly where you like it. I'm kind of used to I tend, I, I guess I tend, at the more I stay out in the bush, the more I see, seem to rely on the old skills that I learned way back in the day when I was in the army. And they're sort of just coming up from inside, I guess you could say. They're, they're um, coming back to me and I'm using them more and more. This style here of how I tie it is how we used to do it back in the army. It's just a permanent line we have fixed to the tab and on each of the corners. And then halfway along we have a removable line that um, can be fixed to either tab on either side. Um, I guess it's a slightly different way of setting up to a ridge line. I haven't tried a ridge line before. I'm going to, to see if I want to change and change to that. But the way this works here, I just lay the, the shelter out on the ground at the distance I want it. Then I just pick it straight up, come here, tie it to the tree, and then go tie the other end. And then tie those two corners, and it's half up usually flip, flip this side here over. Once that side there is secured, I flip this side over and I can set my, my hammock and my shelter, the rest of my um, sleeping up underneath this side. Then when I'm ready to go to sleep, flip it back over and tie the corners out. So yeah, it's just, I guess, just old army skills. I tend to go back to what I know. <laughs> it works just as effectively. It had done for many decades and it works just as effectively now. So I tend to stick with it, but I'm gonna try the ridge line out and uh, see how that goes as well. If you're familiar with the um, Hennessy shelters that come with the, I think this is the Safari hammock, I think this one is, it's quite small. Um, as you can see, there's a lot more space using this old army shelter. Uh, it's summertime here in New Zealand and I've got it set high so I don't overheat underneath inside of here. And that's the way to control the temperature regulation is just by lowering or raising the tarp above your sleeping position. And so, in a, in a very hot environment, having that tarp shelter up high, or even higher if I wanted to, it allows my body heat to, um, to go up into the atmosphere that's under the, tent, under the shelter here, and then just get swept away. So it helps keep me cool. In a colder environment, I would lower it down. Um, I've been, I would lower the shelter down on top of the hammock. I've been in, the coldest environment I've been in is in a place called Tekapo in the South Island of New Zealand, in Tekapo. Uh, it's very open, very barren land, and we did a couple of exercises out there, and sometimes in the winter. And a lot of heavy rain, very, very cold and damp the entire time. And we didn't have hammocks, of course, we were on the ground. Uh, so we'd have a sleeping mat down, sleeping bag on top of that. And we would have the shelter, uh, in order to keep us warmer, we would have the shelter just above the sleeping bag. You want to come in so that you don't touch the shelter, otherwise the rain can start coming through where you've touched it. So we would actually crawl into our spaces, not on our hands and knees, um, but we would actually 
crawl in on our bellies to get into our sleeping bags so that we didn't touch the top of the shelter but it was incredibly warm and then we would take um, a backpack and put it at either end whichever way the wind was coming from or the breeze was coming from there we would put the backpack at that end and it acts kind of like a door like a barrier to um, stop the wind coming directly in on, to, on top uh, into us so these shelters here are really really good you can have them in in super cold environments and you can regulate your regulate your uh, the temperature of the atmosphere around you this little microclimate that you've made you can regulate that simply by lowering or raising the tarpaulin uh, I guess while we're in here as you can see this is not very evenly set up I've got a lot of space here on this side and this side here it's uh, kind of coming much closer to the um, to the hammock you know, it doesn't really matter. In the in the bush, you're just going with the best environment you can find to sleep in. And this was the best I found. I searched around for a little while, and this flat area here, well, it's not exactly flat. I, I guess I could sleep on it if I slept on the ground. But this open patch here, with the two trees spaced just at the right position, was the best I could find. Little tie-out points, I had to use what, I've, what I could find. I've got small little plants that I've tied out my shelter to some of them big trees and fallen branches that I've got the corners tied out to but over this side the um, the tie outs are quite low to the ground and so that side of the shelter is sloping down a bit closer to the hammock than this side you know it doesn't really matter it's a it's relatively dry at the moment and the shelter here can touch uh, touch the hammock and I'm not expecting any rain so I don't think any rain will come through once I get in the hammock anyway, it, it, the, my weight will pull it down a little bit and I'll get a bit more space there. Um, also another reason why I was kind of happy with this position is that the prevailing breeze is coming from this direction. Uh, what's that? Coming from the west. And so I was able to lower that side of the shelter a little bit more so that the breeze will hit the shelter and bounce off rather than have it high and it comes right in and keeps me cold. Temperature variations in the New Zealand bush well last yesterday the highest temperature here in the bush was about 20 degrees 20 degrees Celsius and it dropped down to 10 degrees Celsius at the coldest part of the evening so or the coldest part of the night was so it dropped by 10 10 degrees um, if you're looking at Fahrenheit that works out to about uh, 20 down to 10 would be 72 degrees down, rough, roughly 72 degrees down to about 52 degrees that that would be the temperature drop and one thing I've um, I've learned is that because of the temperature drop and I tend to sleep in a blanket not a sleeping bag I did feel the cold so I need to bring this um, shelter down closer when I crash out at night time or when I set up, I'm just going to bring the shelter down closer. It's going to keep me warmer inside there. Compensate for the fact that I'm using a blanket, which has um, is limited in a cold environment, as opposed to a sleeping bag. So where do you find these shelters? Um, Army surplus stores. That's where you find them. The uh, Army surplus store, the main one, there's a, a couple of branches around the country. Most people are familiar with that. It's called Army and Outdoors, I think it's called. There is one that a lot of people don't know about as well. It's in Onihunga in Auckland. Usually when I go in there, I'll see one or two, two of these hutchies there. And quite often they have the whole bag with the tent poles and that as well. It's a tiny little um, army surplus store, but they got a pretty good range of products, a lot of old vintage stuff as well. So that's called Army and Leather in Onihunga Mall Road, Onihunga, Auckland. Worth checking out. That's about it. Thanks, guys. Ah, oh, before I go. One more thing is rain coming into the shelter. I don't know if you can see it there in the film, but rain hits the rope and runs down the rope and then comes into your hammock. One way to get rid of that is just have stuff hanging from it. I'll tie my shemag up around that so the rain comes in, hits the shemag and drips off. Uh, I can also tie rope, paracord, you know, just wrap it around a couple of times, tie it in a knot. That's it. That's about all you need. This case here, what works quite well is the Hennessy um, hooks that are used for the Hennessy shelter. They they're permanently on the um, hammock line, and they work quite as well. They work quite good too. Yeah, that's about it. Thanks for tuning in, guys.